director of the Edgar Allan Poe House of Museum, and I'm so honored to help all of those who have gathered here together today to celebrate not only Edgar Allan Poe, but the vibrancy of his life here in Baltimore. Um, in fact, I think it's quite telling on a day when innumerable women have gathered throughout the country to in the world to speak about justice, to speak about the power of women, that a man who revered women, who happened to also be living in Baltimore in a rather humble house on the west side of Baltimore, uh, at the time when the last time this nation was quite as divided as it is now over a president, Andrew Jackson was president in, in, in D.C. or in, in America when, in fact, Poe lived here in Baltimore. So I think it's only fitting that we men, women, children, and others gather here today to celebrate the legacy of a man who is well, the denizen of darkness is in fact also the unifier of people throughout the world. The Edgar Allan Poe House Museum was taken over by Baltimore, Poe Baltimore, um, in 2013. In 2014, I was honored to be able to help the board and many great volunteers reopen the house um, under the guidance of Poe Baltimore. And in fact, we have broken all records. Um, we're very lucky today, and I'm going to point out in a moment, to have a number of people who it would not be possible without them to be open and available to the public. This past year, we opened in the beginning of April. I refused to do it on April 1st because I said no one's going to use it or open in April and my birthday. Um, so we opened on April 2nd. It was less than 10 months and 15 hours a day. I need you to listen to this because it's really incredible. Historic houses are how if they get 15 to 30 people a weekend. The Edgar Allan Poe House Museum here in the Poppleton neighborhood enticed over 10,400 visitors in 15 hours a week in 10 months.